Welcome to Ray's Sensation. I'm your host, Dan. And today I'm going to be looking at the um, fanzine Hong Kong Film Connection out of Texas. Uh, a great um, fanzine. It put out a lot of issues in just a few years. It was really going strong for quite a time. And um, this issue came out in 1994. I think the the issues I have here run to what this final issue, it even says final issue on it, 1997. So, um, I'll have one stack like that. Uh, so they put out a fair amount of issues in that uh, time. And this was a, a, a really great time for Hong Kong films. Um, a lot of uh, exciting stuff going on. It was getting close to the end of this of this hot period. Um, so, uh, you know, they, they kind of burn out a little bit. Uh, some types of Hong Kong films um, had, were burning out, but uh, there were still new things popping up. This covers um, uh, gender bending. Um, there were a couple things where a couple movies had come out where there was confusion about what sex someone you know someone was disguising themselves as a man because they were denied access because they were a woman and some guy falls in love with them and has to overcome the idea they think the person's a, another man and they're like oh no I can't be gay but I do love this person you know so it's it's kind of almost innocent kind of way of dealing with the whole situation um not really pressing it head on but it was good for uh hong kong at the time for the hong kong films because they were they were not uh <laughs> if you think american films weren't very open-minded but uh and american films still are kind of stodgy sometimes but um uh you know here they're talking about Wong car way uh ashes of time and chunking express so that should give you an idea of where they are god of gamblers 2 was coming out so um you know this this first issue's uh, uh this this isn't the first issue this this particular issue though is a little thin the um but there's a lot of writing in it and there's a lot of uh of um films uh reviewed at the end so it was still a good way to uh find out about films coming out in Hong Kong you know because you had to look for them then on tape uh, by this time um DC used to have I was living in D.C. at the time. They used to have a lot of great theaters to go see stuff. Um, but the theaters were all closing because bootleg tapes would get get to the area long before the movies would, would make their way to these uh, to the Asian theaters. And so people would see the movies many months before uh, the um, movies hit the theater. So, bummer, but there you go. Um this issue, uh, you know, they're they're reviewing some. Uh, they're reviewing Thundering Mass, which is an older film, a uh, Stephen Chow's uh, from Beijing with Love. Um, so that gives you an idea about where what they're doing there. This is a, another another kind of small issue. There's the classic Kung Fu Theater, the Thunder Man, Thundering Mass, and then some more reviews. No real article that time. There's my address at the time. <laughs> uh, then um, this issue, uh, Samo has "Don't Give a Damn," which is, you know, kind of a, you know, he he was coming off. He had had a great run. And he was kind of winding down. His films were kind of winding down at that point for a while. Um, it, it covers uh, one of Jet Li's earlier films, My Father is a Hero. Um, they have an interview with Michelle Yeoh. And here is New Line Cinema is just starting to get ready to release their, their heavily cut and dubbed version of Jackie Chan's Rumble in the Bronx. And they, they talk about that. Um, they don't review it because it isn't uh, done yet. 
Um, here's an interesting thing. This is the Hong Kong box, box office for 1994. God of Gamblers was number one. Speed, that is the Keanu Reeves movie, was number two. Drunken Master 2, um, which I tend to think of as a big, important movie, but, you know, it, you know, and that's not bad, number three, but still, uh, when I think of that movie and how great I think it is, uh, that seems like a little small. Stephen Chow's From Beijing with Love. Love on Delivery is another of his films. Uh, True Lives, uh, Treasure Hunt, Hail the Judge, and He's a Woman. So um, that's pretty interesting. There's the, the Michelle Yeoh thing. You've, you've by now probably pretty familiar with her Eve early stuff. The Crown Prince of Hong Kong Comedies. And there they try and break down why they think he's become the king of comedy. Eh. Okay. And here's some uh, more classics covered. Oh, they do have a review of Rumble in the Bronx. Oh, it's talking about the differences between the two. You remember that? There's don't give a damn. Hey, there's that. Um, this issue, latest Hong Kong films. Uh, here's a little article about Yun Wo Ping and the Yun Clan. And they're uh, early, it's their, covering their early films, all their early kung fu movies. And they cover uh, Chinese Odyssey part one and two. Seven Grand Masters. So that's another good issue. Uh, they're, they're, they're good reviews too. They, uh, they, um, they pick some good stuff and they write, they write really well about them. So. And that's really what I look for is, uh, you know, if I'm going to bother to uh, look at these things, um, you know, were, were they well written? And this is a this is a good fanzine. Um, here's uh, this issue's on a slicker paper. It looks like it's pretty yellowed already compared to some of the stuff. Um, on Car Y interview. Here's that, Promoting Fallen Angels, his latest one at the time. A Ronnie Yu interview. They're doing great with the interviews. John Wu back on target. <laughs> well, look, at, the, at this point, he's already making, uh, made Broken Arrow. Thunderbolt, Ken Lo. The villain in that one. Sixty million dollar man. Yeah, so good, good stuff. Here's a as Chow Yun Fat starts his Hollywood career. It's a look back on his uh, Asian films. Robin Shu. There's 15 capsule reviews of Chow's lesser known films. Okay. Some of them are lesser known for a reason. But all right. Let's just take a deep dive. There's the second part of the Yun Wo Ping article. They scored an interview with Jackie Chan and St Stanley Tong. And an in-depth look at Chunking Express unset unset report of police story four. So and there they've made Ken Lowe the fabulous kicker from so many uh films. Most most of the times he's a bad guy. And they have an interview with him. 
second part of the Jackie Chan interview. The last issue, Mr. Canton Lady Rose revisited. That was a poorly received Jackie Chan movie. Um, basically a remake of uh, a movie called Pocket Full of Miracles, um, which was a remake of A Lady for a Day. It talks about Frank Capra's original films. Um, so he basically, he really wanted to make this comedy drama and then he shoehorned in his uh, action scenes and it didn't really satisfy too many people. But, you know, definitely if you haven't watched that movie because of the kind of poor reviews it gets, there's not much action in it, but what there is are some of his best. They're really great. There's real, two set pieces right offhand I can think of that are really, really spectacular. And uh, definitely check that one out. All right, I'm just going to pop. Here's the rest of them. Uh, reviews of new films. Cynthia Rothrock, Billy Chong, Jet Li's Black Mask. And there was the, the last issue. And by this time, of course, uh, things were really getting kind of rough. People were, le you know, filmmakers were leaving Hong Kong. Um, the type of action movies I was really liked had, had, were pretty, uh, had pretty much disappeared or were disappearing. But that's a... There you go. That's a look at Hong Kong Film Connection. Uh, a great, um, one of the great early, not too early, uh, but um, great Hong Kong fanzines. So uh, like and subscribe.